Good evening, I'm DK Ronsnow. Welcome back to the TTT News. We are here at the Sport for All meeting room, the National Cycling Velodrome, Balmain, Kuva, and we are speaking with none other than Mr. Mark Chandler of Marked Images. Thank you for joining us, sir. Pleasure to be here, Mandiki. Now, there's a question I want to ask you about a phrase, painting with light. Break that down for me and the impact of that phrase upon your life. Well, you take me back all the way to the beginning there. So, I work in a library, and a big part of my job is, well, my paid job, that is, my day job, is to research. So I do research, I help students do research on whatever it is that they need to find out for like their school projects and that kind of thing, right? And it was a, it was like an engineering, something in engineering that I was looking at. And you know, like those Google ads that comes up on the websites and whatnot, it was literally this phrase from within an article. And we just had the banner literally painted with light. But why it resonated so much with me is because I am a lover of culture, I'm a lover of art, I'm a lover of anything expressive, but I ain't that talented. <laughs> so <laughs> it's like, you know, you're looking for an avenue to channel this creativity or this eye or this whatever it is that I had in my head at the point in time to really express myself the way I wanted to. And when I saw that, like for me, that was just the aha moment. So. Painting, a, painting with light really and truly is a phrase that is used in photography because we capture moments using light and then, but we also create images. And if you know of Rembrandt, there's always this um, reference to the different type of lighting techniques and that kind of thing. He literally painted light. And that is really where the phrase originated from. So if you say <coughs> take your back all the way to the beginning. Give me some milestones along the journey from that aha moment to you becoming a self-taught photographer. Well, that aha moment will have been six years before I actually started photography. So from seeing that article till 20, January of 2018 was me learning how to do photography and it was really a simple but taxing process in the sense that I literally just read articles that I saw so anything I saw on the topic I would read it and then it transitioned from reading to the good almighty YouTube and <laughs> we well I shouldn't say we but it was just a process of gathering information as much information as I could but while trying to find myself within it and see how I can utilize it to bring it to something real. You call yourself a lover of culture, creativity. What are some of the things that inspire the work that you do now? Um, I would say paintings for the most part because there are a lot of artists and even graphic designers to a certain extent that they do things in such a way you know the medium that they used, but yet still you can't see the brush strokes or you can't see the, the finishes, so to speak. And the aesthetic that I try to at least go for is something that, as a friend rightfully said, you could just hang it on a wall. <laughs> no, being inspired is one thing, but then going further to say, okay, well, after all the inspiration, I think this is where I want to hang my hat a little bit and this is where I'm going to make my little pocket and be in, so that niche. How, how, how did you say, okay, well, I think this is where I want to be? Trial and error, for the most part. Um, hmm. In essence, we, you know, we, so okay, we, we like a lot of things. But then at some point, you have to laser your focus into what would actually work for you or what really resonates with you. So in my instance, I loved landscape photography. But what was more challenging for me was portraits and weddings in particular. And to be honest, that's where I really get the most amount of my inspiration. And so, so you're going way harder? It, 
unfortunately, but fortunately. <laughs> <laughs> no, because I think the challenge in it, and I like the, one of my mantras is making moments matter. And if you really dissect what that really stands for is capturing every single moment that you can in, and portraying it in the best way that you can. So what better way than a moment that is only once in a lifetime? in essence, and that's where wedding photography comes in. And then from the portrait side of it, it's more trying to get people to see what is inside your head or getting them to translate rather what is inside your head. And with that though, I, I want to ask, do you feel pressure to make that moment matter? Because this moment that you have with that person that they are going to have for the rest of their life hung on the wall or somebody has, and Yes, it's a moment, but it's also a snapshot in a period that will be an indelible memory. How do you find that like, whoa, there's a big challenge or exciting something you want to be up to that challenge? How do you approach it? it? Both ways, because it is extremely intimidating because you have to acknowledge the fact that you cannot redo a wedding. Sure, you can get married three, four, five times, but the way you felt at that day, the way you felt when you touch your button, when you buckle your belt, you tie your shoelace, you, you, you walk out the hotel, you, you touch your step by the church, it, you cannot recreate those things. And for me, that's where the intimidation is, but the blessing in it is that I get to actually live through someone else's moments and see it in a way they wouldn't see it because the one consolation I always have is that either the bride would simply say, they didn't see the entire day. All they saw was the person they went to get married to. So they didn't see their reaction, them didn't know the cry, they didn't see their parents, they didn't see the decor, they didn't see anything. And then the other side of it is that I would have never imagined that my wedding day would look like this. And so that's where my responsibility comes in now because I have to create the best version of that day for you. Making that moment matter. Making it matter. Now, how much of you do you bring to bear in these portraits, in these photographs? And I ask that question because I saw an article done. There were about six photographers. They dealt with the same subject in the same space. Yes. But each of them got a different backstory mm -hmm. for that person. So one photographer was told that this person's a convict. One person was told that this person's a widower. One person, and the six photo photographs looked so different. How much of yourself comes to bear when you take, when you're making these moments? That's a very good question because it's actually something I never really thought of, but I would say I am 50-50 there because while I, okay, so while you would come to me because you like my style or you like the way that I portray things, at the same time, you are still the client. And half of my energy is really based on your energy. So it's kind of a conversion, so to speak. Now you talk about your style. Describe your style. That is something I cannot do. <laughs> and I shouldn't say I cannot, but I don't think I've actually identified what my style is as yet. I'm still in the incubation stage where that is concerned. Now, looking at your website, I see creative, dynamic, precise, uh, evolving. Um, how much of that comes to bear? Well, I mean, we evolve every single day. Every day, I mean, be the, the blessing and the curse in being a self-taught photographer is, well, one, that every day I learn something different. So I learned how to do something different. So the way I would have been inspired to edit an image before is not the way I would be inspired to edit an image now. The curse in it is that I always have to continue learning because I don't really have a starting point. So for example, if I did a degree or if I did some sort of formal training, I would have been at a starting point and then I grew from there. But starting from the ground up, you're always growing because there's a lot of fundamental things that you miss, and I think that would be one of the drawbacks, is that a lot of things that you need to know how to do, you don't really know how to do it, so you only learn it when you actually need to do it. And I, I kind of like that. 
Yeah, because I, I was yeah. saying that some people would actually find that liberating as opposed yeah, to it is. miss say, this is the rule and this is what you need to do, as opposed to say, okay, I'm working towards an effect and I will get there because yeah. I'm constantly evolving and trying to get to that vision that you see. And a big part of it is acknowledging that too, right? because a lot of us don't understand that we are continuously evolving. So sure, you landed that job, but then when you get there now, the dynamic of that environment is going to change how you think. And then when that change happens, it's going to change again. And it's going to continue changing because you are growing and you are evolving. And I want to continue speaking about that evolution, but we do that when we return from this break. We're speaking with Mark Chandler. Stay with us. Welcome back. We are speaking with Mark Chandler of Marked Images, a self-taught photographer. And you spoke about the fact that this is also an alternative revenue stream. Yes. So take what, what are some of the things that are going through your head when you take it from being enamored with a phrase to possibly reading upon it, hobby, this is something that you do professionally? Um. I would say from the hobby stage of it, because the real reason why I picked up a camera in the first place is because I wanted to document my life and all the transitions that happen in my life, but the way I see it. And so, of course, you know, having a family, having experienced different moments, having been able to go to different events, you get to see things differently. The biggest hurdle, however, it's an expensive hobby. And so at some point, you either can no longer afford to continue growing or you simply just stay stagnant. And I saw myself at that stagnant point at a point in time and I realized that, okay, to go further, I need to invest more. But I was kind of uncomfortable investing more of my money. So I decided to try converting it into a business so that the business now would support its life rather than I having to actually support it. Now, I want to shift gears kind of radically now. Maintain the fact that you continue speaking about evolving, yeah. growing, evolution. You've evolved in a way that has saw you involved in politics. Yep. How did that come about? That was a shocker to me, actually. Uh, I always give kudos to my friend because he was the one who kind of made it happen, for want of a better word. Um, I've always been interested in politics. Actually, I did a certificate in public administration with the intention to do um, international relations, but I basically gave up on the concept because I thought that politics was too corrupt to actually make a difference as an individual. And a big part of that would have been immaturity to a certain extent because I would have been like 22 years old or so. And I didn't really understand the depth of politics. And a friend of mine, we always would talk about the economy and you know policies and all these kinds of things. And he was saying, you know, we born in 89, you know, I mean, we kind of cross over to the tete and onward and at some point we can't depend on our parents to be our backbones anymore. At some point we had to kind of take over and it was only when he said that I realized, you know, I really need to, I have a lot that I can offer and I really need to start using it. So at that point in time, well, I heard of Nikolai Edwards and even though he was in South, I, I felt that I could at least give it a try, so to speak. I didn't think it would have reached to the point where it reached, where I'm actually holding a seat on a board within the um, party, but I went there to document him. That was my intention initially. I had no interest in actually being a part of the party per se, but I, I didn't want to hinder his positivity or his rise to, you know, take in this mantle. 
And I thought that if he could take such a huge challenge, why not document that? That was my thinking going in. And then when I heard what he had to actually offer, it, as he said, evolved. <laughs> now, documenting the process, documenting the journey, um, what are some of the things that really spoke to you and say, okay, well, this is kind of making sense. I want to get, lend a little strength or a little energy behind this. Um, in terms of the politician or in terms of the journey itself? And I'll ask for both. Okay, cool. As you understand it. Um, what made sense to me is his enthusiasm. Because I don't know the guy personally, obviously. I'm meeting you for the first time. But his sales pitch was actually a sales pitch. It wasn't a promise. It wasn't a, well, if we get this, we will do this. It was a more, this is what we would like to do. Let's see how we can make this a reality. That's how, that's how it translated to me. It wasn't a, well, you know, if you give me a five years again, I will pave this road and I will fix that pothole and I will do this and I will do that and I will do the other. And it's not necessarily a bash to the other political entities because the reality is they paved the way for people like us now to do what we're doing. And that's actually a blessing because we can see where they are making mistakes and build on those mistakes rather than using the mistakes to bring them down. Because competition breeds, I forget what's weird. Sometimes efficiency, yeah. sometimes progress. So you find if we keep pressing on, they will start to do better as well. And it, at the end of the day, it's all in the service of people. So by all means. And that's what the, one of the things I wanted to ask about because saying I, I wasn't sure of the entry point for your involvement mm -hmm. and whether or not you would have said deliberately you want to step away from one of the traditional parties. Mm -hmm. So, so, and I guess you kind of answered that. So, yeah, what, it, but, but, but that's, a, that's, a high, that's a high hill to climb, though. It is, but the thing about it is this, DK. Um, there are things that we would believe in, and then there are things that we would not believe in. And I think that if we really want to see the type of change we want to, that we're always talking about since however long now, we, the people, actually have to put our feet forward and really take stake in our economy. For someone who wants to do that within the PNM, by all means, go ahead. Because at the end of the day, now I am of the thinking that it is not impossible for one person to go in and change that entity. The same for any other political party. It, it really starts with you. And if you are genuinely someone that wants to see the change, I think you can bring it out. And I think you can make that actually happen. So I, I always say I'm, I'm ambiguous when it comes to politics because I don't necessarily belong to a party and I never really took ownership of a party. I, took, I take ownership in what the party does for the economy. Whether they're in power or not, that part is irrelevant. This was the first time that I actually took ownership in our party because I felt that it really stood for what I want to stand for. And it might just be about 10 people behind me, but I still feel a lot stronger knowing that those 10 people think in the same way that I do. And you speak about feeling. What was that journey like? in terms of going through the process, there'd be highs, there'd be lows, and, but a process that you had a lot more skin in the game for. It was frustrating, to be totally honest, but it was also liberating in the sense that you get to really understand the shortfalls of the system. And it's only when you have a great appreciation for the system in itself and where there are things that need to be changed, then now you can really champion a cause to actually change it. But then on the other hand, as a photographer, it was pretty amazing. Scary, but amazing. And I use the word scary because it was happening through a pandemic. Our, the campaign started February and ended October. Sorry, not October, August, my bad. But during that time, you had restrictions, you had 
you know, limitation on the amount of people that you could gather, limitations on where you could go, limitations on what you could do. And then on top of that now, that in itself brought financial restrictions because the economy in itself was closed. So you're not really getting buying from people because they genuinely don't have the money to give or they don't think that you're good enough to get the money, the little bit of money that they had. So it documenting that and seeing this one person going door to door from let's say nine in the morning till six in the evening and it's like, you're really trying to communicate with everybody that, hey, as a youth, I want to see this happen. May not happen now, but I started now. It, that, for me, that was really amazing. And, and basically just putting in that work. But before we close, though, I want to ask what role does faith, and specifically your faith, play in this journey that, you, that you're taking? It's basically the beginning and the end for me, in the sense that we have, a, as much as I have an obligation to my faith, my faith requires me to interact into society. I cannot be a good person by myself. I have to be a good person in the community, for the community, and with the community, while carrying a few people holding on to my pocket going with me. So it is actually because of my faith is why I decided that I needed to do this because years before, I didn't genuinely understand the link between the two. But now it's a lot clearer to me. And I feel as if I, if I do this, as, and I say this as humble as possible, there might be someone looking at me who has the exact same idea, but is afraid to take the challenge or afraid to take that step. They may actually do it knowing that someone who they can relate to or someone who they may look up to is actually doing it. Because that precedent has been taken. Exactly. But we want to thank you very much for your time, Mark. Mark Chandler, as you continue to evolve and grow and paint with light, we <laughs> want to thank you for tuning in. On behalf of everyone involved, I'm DK Ronster. Enjoy the rest of your day.